Jesse, are we going straight out? Are we going straight out? Are we, are we broadcasting straight away? No, we can do now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, welcome. Order, order. Hello, simmer down. Okay, welcome to. Oh, that was exciting. Welcome to the formal part of the proceedings. Uh, the winter 2024 sales conference, Vivo Barefoot, as part of our spring equinox gathering. We are going live to the world. Jesse, are we? We're out there. So we welcome friends from, no doubt, Japan, if they're still just about awake, konnichiwa. The Australians, and um, I know friends from all over the world, America, and we have some of those friends from different parts here amongst us today. So welcome all, and we are here in our new nature home in Barley Wood, which is just south of Bristol Airport. And we've had a day with the company looking at um, different aspects of the business. We've had a performance update. We've looked at our update on regeneration. We've had a look at our new nature homes and hybrid working and flexible working evolutions. And we also had a big brain, brand and product and um, communications brainstorming session where the new amazing ideas for the future have officially been born. Right, Heather? <laughs> Apparently you got one really good idea. You only need one. You only need one. <laughs> it's all to be revealed later. So anyway, look, it's my job just to welcome you, say hello, and just to reaffirm a little bit on our strategic direction, where we're going, how we're going, what we're doing. And in many ways, this is a one-pager. This lives for a year, and as I'm sure most of you know and understand, we organize it with the background, the vision, and the values. This really never changes. It's been the same since we started Vivo Barefoot, and should be the same for many years to come. The middle ground is our, the main metrics of how we track the progress of the business across regenerative business, product, and community. And then the foreground focus is a little bit the sort of more tactical and strategic things that we're doing in a one, two, three year kind of time frame. So I can give you a little bit of an update as to where we're going and how we're doing amongst, uh, across all of this. So, you know, I'm happy to say that this um, day today is really a reaffirmation of our core reconnection to nature um, mission. And, you know, in many ways also super important that we stay really connected as a group. And we spoke a little bit about staying together as a, you know, we're, we're about 150 people in the Vivo head office now, and that is the number where humans can just about still know each other and operate as a kind of organic, interconnected ecosystem before things have to start getting really 
corporate. And we're sort of quite determined to stay to that number for the foreseeable future. So, how are we doing? Not that well. <laughs> we, uh, we've had a tough four months, there's no doubt about it. We, um, uh, the last time we gathered was in December, and we were kind of living in the, in the, in the quagmire of it all then. Um, a number of things basically ha have transpired in the last four months. We, um, the number one thing I think has been that the website basically crashed in October and November, which was effectively a, you know, our biggest and shop going on fire. Um, we've done an amazing job to recover that situation. We also had challenges where we probably put the prices up a bit too high, pulled the promo codes back a little bit too quickly, um, we had a huge influx of um, cyber sabotage of people coming in and uh, all kinds of fake Vivo websites, fake social media accounts, and that's been the case all over the world. I was in Australia the other day and they've had the same thing even down there. But, you know, we are still, despite all of that, having our best year ever, but as you've all heard today, we are a little bit behind plan. Um, but I'm really happy to say we're having a really good march and we're coming out of the hole. So, so on, on, uh, as we go through some of these key metrics very quickly, the revenue, the e-com contribution margin, the profit are all down, we're all behind plan, all massively up on last year. And we're in the process of writing an exciting plan for next year. But we are behind the curve a little bit for all the reasons I just mentioned. Lead time is also um, is progressing, but not as fast as we'd like it to. Um, and getting those materials held up the supply chain to be able to draw down on core Never Out of Stock products is a huge part of what we're doing. But the Never Out of Stock project products are so Never Out of Stock that there's too many of them, so we've had to <laughs> slow that down a little bit. Um, we've, we've made a lot of progress in terms of the, the, the V matrix and the transparency of the value chain, you know, really important meetings in Asia in December, uh, engaging with the full uh, value chain. Revivo, pairs is, uh, Revivo Repairs is also progressing, and Revivo itself is having an amazing year. And we're about to launch the European Repair Center, and we're looking forward to doing the American Repair Center soon as well. Uh, VHealth subscribers, due to the website issues, a lot of the te technology projects have been slower to come on board as we'd like, and so the VHealth subscription service got pushed back in favor of fixing the website, which has slowed that down a little bit. Um, and Vivo Biome has suffered a little bit the same thing, but there's a tremendous amount of industry and work going on to bring Vivo Biome to life, which is our kind of focus innovation project, and is very much still happening. Uh, the, 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 the Pioneer launch is in full effect. A lot of you will have worn the first Vivo biomes. And um, in, uh, in the early summer, the first few thousand pairs will be sold directly to consumers, which is super exciting. And then the community, the, our, our community is growing. And, you know, we're really happy to say that Barefoot as a category is also really growing. We're seeing it growing. We're also seeing a lot of competition come in, new brands popping up all over the world. Um, but, you know, as, as you can see, the, the, the community size, our retained customers, the, the women's mix is even improving. Um, our ecosystem happiness has also improved tremendously. So, you know, we're making a lot of progress on that front. And then in terms of the foreground focus, we are still... Uh, focused on these on these four priority things, the MyVivo digital journey. That's got a, a bit of an amber next to it for all the reasons I just mentioned. It's still very much the strategic focus to create this interconnected customer journey, omni-channel across all the constituent parts, Revivo, Vivo Biome, VHealth, all linked to new, sh new shoe sales, and offline, online, globally. Um, and that is, you know, an obviously extraordinarily profound project that is being sort of rolled out in phases. And we're making progress, but we have a long way to go. Uh, we have, we're happy to obviously now just launch the first uh, Supernatural sneakers that are high 90s natural. 
Um, and there's a lot of prototyping, a lot of learning going on on the super poly recycled products, which is effectively making products out of rubbish that can be recycled at the same level of polymer uh, quality, so you don't need to sort of downcycle. Nearly all recycling now is downcycling, but being able to recycle at the same level of polymer is the big challenge in the sort of plastics world of shoemaking. And we're making, I would say, we're just learning a tremendous amount. We're, we're, work, we're putting a tremendous amount of effort and energy into that. And the same thing with natural shoemaking, lots and lots of new materials being trialed, a lot of innovation going, a lot of exciting things. The value of Vivo has a big green tick next to it, but, and we have increased our prices successfully, but that's probably, uh, too, probably too fast, too quick, and so you know, we're having to sort of relook at some of the price architecture across the board there to, to re-evaluate that and, and get that into, you know, there's no question, we're not acquiring as many new customers, especially in places like America, as we might, where, where we've lost some of that entry-level price positioning. And finally, hybrid working, the thing that you know, every business in the world is wrestling with and learning every day how to do it. We're all gathered here today in the beautiful barley wood, the spring equinox, the blossom is full. I can see a magnolia tree out the window there that is absolutely teeming with blossom. The first pear tree blossoms just appeared today, you might notice in the walled garden. We're all eating the veg from this amazing place and um, you know, this will be a big part of how we reconnect going forward um, and how we address this big challenge of hybrid working. So without further ado, we're going to, you know, the last thing you want to do, I know, is hear lots of babble from me. We're going to present, you know, again, a massive step forward for Vivo. The, the products, the ranges, the shoes around me are getting better than ever on every level. Super proud to share what we've all created. This is a little bit of an in-between season, but you know, our challenge is to keep w winter and summer as important as spring and autumn from a, you know, traditionally not so, but um, you know, we've got some exciting things to share with you. Hope you all enjoy it. Um, I'll see you in the woods later. And uh, you know, thanks to all those joining online. And I'm very happy to introduce Steve, who this is Steve's first First uh, Viva Barefoot Sales Conference, new commercial director uh, who comes with a whole wealth of experience that, you know, in many ways we've been crying out for in Vivo for many moons. So, we're, you know, I'm super delighted for, to, for Steve to come and uh, introduce himself to you all um, and guide the commercial ship of Vivo into the future, turn us into a leaner, meaner fighting machine. Thank you. Is it this one that clicks in the middle? Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, just check and see if my mic's working, I think it is. Um, hey, everybody, uh, and everybody online. Um, I have the awkward situation of presenting myself. Uh, these things are awkward enough, I think, when you're doing them in small groups, never mind hearing five minutes before you go on stage that it's going live uh, to the world. Um, so I'll keep this relatively brief. Um, it's just a bit about who I am, so you can maybe tell from the accent. Um, if you need uh, subtitles, then you'll determine that I'm not native to these lands. Um, I'm Irish, growing up in the uh, glens of Antrim, uh, where we have lovely hexagon hexagonal uh, blocks called the Giant's Causeway, which uh, felt like uh, a bit of a link into Vivo before I joined, actually, so maybe it was written in the stars to join. Um, I'm there with my uh, partner Gemma and three children, so if I look pretty tired to you guys it's because I have a six week old which uh, has uh, jumped in the middle of my Vivo journey. Um, I also on my downtime spend lots of time in nature, I think it's a cliched thing almost in Vivo now, it's almost an expectation if you're in Vivo you probably do spend some time outdoors, so I spend lots of time uh, hiking you know, with my family, my, my partner and friends. Uh, and when I'm not doing that, I de-stress by getting my ass kicked on the mats in uh, jiu-jitsu as well. Um, I just put a small quote up here that I kind of live by. So if it's, if it's not right, do not do it. If it's not true, do not say it. It's a kind of a vibe of the Stoics. And for me, it's kind of, if you're getting to know me, that's kind of what I live by. So the, the value of Vivo and simplicity and honesty and transparency is one that's uh, definitely close to my heart. Um, I now live in the bonnie, bonnie banks of uh, Loch Lomond in Scotland, um, where we get to spend lots of time in nature, um, but I've lived, lived across uh, the world in 
Amsterdam, Stockholm, uh, Sydney for, for a number of years as well. So, so uh, got lots of experience in different cultures and seeing how they generate their barefoot journey. I have to say Sydney, and I was just speaking to Ash there about warmer climates. Barefoot is obviously quite prominent in those places. Um, I keep my feet wrapped up in the UK more so, so it's good that I'm now working for a barefoot brand. Um, and just a quick view on what I've done. So I, I, as Gala said, I've, I've, I've worked in this industry for a little while. For, for some brands you may know, some brands you don't. Um, the one thing that's consistent for me though is, is no matter who I'm working for, you're, you're ultimately a custodian of the brand. You know, some of those brands I worked for, Hunter there was, was born in the 1800s, Tiger Sweden in 1903, and they're very old brands and they've outlived a lot of people. Um, and when you're a custodian of a brand, you've got a duty to really take care of that brand and be a caretaker for that brand during the time you're there and make it a better place than, than, than when you started. So I, I take that kind of role quite seriously when, when coming into this, into this role as well. So that's enough about the awkward bit about me. Um, maybe, I hope this hasn't turned off. Oh, it has. There we go, clicked the wrong button already. Sorry. Thought this might happen when I go to click the video later, but it hasn't yet. Um, okay, so this this might be a bit of a doomy gloomy message for a, a commercial person to share with you all, but we are under attack, right? And Galahad touched on that uh, today a couple of times. So we've had uh, an extreme bout this year, more so than ever, of cyber attacks where people are trying to take our IP or brand equity and use that to track their own customers, whether that be through counterfeit product or counterfeit sites. Um, we have lots of brands entering the space in the barefoot um, community. Vivo's done a fantastic job of growing the category in barefoot. So we've been pioneers almost in this category and really driven the demand in this um, entire category where you see if, if you look at any of the Google search trends, the category itself is, is an, uh, on an upward trajectory. And Vivo's done a phenomenal job of, of, of kind of taking advantage of that. And there's been a period of blue waters, I'd say, where, you know, we've been a niche in a niche and we've kind of taken advantage of that. We're now not so niche and, and people are starting to realize the, the health benefits that kind of come behind barefoot footwear. And that's created a lot of entry into the, in, into the marketplace uh, with competitor brands. Um, and also grey market traders as well. So we've had a number of instances where there's people who probably shouldn't have our stock early or late or whatever else and are trading those goods at a discount and, and really just devaluing the most valuable thing we have, which is our brand. So I say the best form of a defense is attack because, and, and Ollie pulled me on this, that attack is not a very vivo friendly word, which I, which I take and I completely understand, but I mean it in, in, in the most uh, sincere sense that Actually, we, we need to defend what we've built and, and, we, and we need to get better at doing that, right? Um, and live almost the mantra of a peaceful warrior, right? You need to pray for peace, but prepare for war. And, and the, the reality is, as more competitors come in, it's a good thing for the category. We'll build the category, we'll grow more uh, appetite within the category, but it's gonna become a lot harder to take share and it's gonna become uh, really challenging as price points come in that are lower than ours. We're teaching people the barefoot message and 50 pound price points, 100 pound price points are coming in and, and eating our lunch, essentially, right? Um, it's not to say that we should race to the bottom and start fighting on price, because that's not the answer. We have more to give than just a quality product. We have the value in the brand and all the principles that go behind that. But I think as we look to the future and we look at the, the, the kind of subsequent financial year and we look at the new season and the winter piece, I think we really do need to take uh, a very strong look at ourselves about living our values of simplicity and dance, right? We, we, we do a lot of amazing things. Like I've actually been shocked by the size of the team. I was expecting the Vivo Legion to be maybe 500 people, 600 people when I joined. But you know, to do what we do with 150 people, we do a lot and we do a lot of amazing things. Um, but I think you know, really the next step is, is simplify to multiply, right? We, we need to really double down on the things that we do well and, and work with our partners in, in the distribution lane to partner much more closely, get really aligned business strategies so that when we're delivering our strategy to the guys maybe on the call in Japan, that there's so many synergies between what they do and what we do and we take the best of all of those. Um, you know, we're, we're quite a collegiate team. We do a lot of discussion and learning from one another and I think there's so many learnings that we can take if we just partner up more closely. 
Um, and, and we've got a lot to get excited about. You know, we're, we're investing in, in a multi-channel strategy. You know, e-com is outperforming probably the other categories as a ratio, but the reality is we saw with the site challenges, if that steps back, our whole business steps back. So, you know, getting to a point where we really invest in our distributors, invest in our wholesale channel, invest in retail, and really protect the business, that's, that, that for me is, is the best form of, a, of attack because we're defending basically the multi-channel uh, landscape and giving customers the choice. Customers will choose where they want to buy our product, whether it be our D2C site, whether it be a wholesale partner or retail shops, depending on the consumer journey that's right for them. So I guess the, the message I just want to leave today and, and, and kind of uh, welcome into the business with is, is, is we need to simplify to multi multiply. And um, following that, then we need to dance. So the continuous improvement is absolutely key within that. So I think um, if, if I can leave you with any thought, it's, it's that one in particular. So in, in your different areas, please just stay focused, stay, stay engaged, and, and please bear, bear with us as we ride the storm of this financial, financial year as well. But that's all I have to add. Thank you. We look at nature, we observe it like we're separate from it, but when you really start to immerse and we start to make a better connection with this, and the more connection we can make to this, actually the more desire we have for saving this, you know. I'm not independent from this, you know. I am nature, I'm not separate of nature. It's interconnected, we are interconnected. So that little film is a bit of a celebration of some of those amazing things that Steve alluded to that have been achieved by the work of every person within the Vivo ecosystem. So that round of applause is sort of inspired by a film, but very much for every person within Vivo who's contributed to making the past 12 months happen. I think it's really important to reflect on how much has been achieved and how far we've come in that space. Um, it's, and, and also what's to come and that opportunity that, that lies ahead. So I'd also just like to say a big thank you to Paddy who put that film together. Um, Paddy is our new film and editor um, who only joined the business a couple of months ago. He's been an amazing asset already and just producing incredible assets like that that get people so stoked and very proud to work for a business like Vivo. Um, it has been an amazing contribution, so thank you, Paddy. 
Um, so for those who don't, ah, it was great, but you don't need to watch it again. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ollie. I lead the outdoor brand here at Vivo. I've been here for a few years um, and love it dearly. Um, and I think when we look back at what we, we've achieved, we need to acknowledge, as has been mentioned already, that the road wasn't easy, but it's also those people who um, join us on that path who are integral to the health of our ecosystem. And John John Florence has, has been a big uh, part of that um, over the last year. This is a partnership we launched almost a year ago to the day. Um, he's a surfer, sailor, athlete, beekeeper, Olympian, father-to-be. Um, but this man isn't just one thing. And actually, this has opened the door to a new market. And this isn't mass surf. This is a growing audience of holistically-minded surfers that operate and live within the sort of intersection of our performance pioneers um, who are sort of functional fitness-based, our active outsiders who are those trail runners and, and um, people who are seeking to increase their performance and their human potential on the trail, and our soil seekers who are looking for this deeper connection to Earth. Um, but this has also given us opportunity with the pro product offering being cross-category to tap into the multifaceted lifestyles of our consumer. And those are some great learnings that we've taken into to seasons ahead. Um, and that's really not just helping us sort of sell cross-category, but ultimately to better service our customer. Um, and um, the partnership so far has already delivered some amazing moments, some great impact, some incredible media in places that we never expected Vivo to show up, and really sort of being quite powerful in terms of reaching new audiences. Um, I'm a surfer, so I'm a bit biased, um, but like having one of the world's greatest athletes and a real force of nature on our team is incredible um, to have in vivo, and I find that really exciting. Um, but it is really important to remember that, that John John Florence is, is very much more than just one thing, and surfing in its purest is, is really deep nature connection. Um, you're literally immersed in the elements, and the act of surfing is... The, the epitome of flow in, in, in human nature. There's nothing else other than you and the, and the power of the earth and the ocean. Um, so it's interesting to reflect that sort of surfing is changing. I've actually worked in the surf industry since my late teens. Um, and it's no longer about dude culture and brands selling mass t-shirts to, to the mainstream. Um, there is this growing undercurrent of, of more holistic thinkers who John John is, is almost literally a pinup for a lot of these people. Um, they're looking for, to sort of seek deeper connections with themselves and, and with nature, to have deeper experiences and to really uh, derive more from the lived experience. And John John is not only an amazing ambassador to have and a spokesperson for this space, but also he's key to accessing other credible figures within the space and really building that. And um, as such, he's, he's a linchpin for our surfing strategy. Um, indisputably, he's, he's still up there with the best. Um, but he's very much at the forefront of that movement of uh, people who are looking at life through a different lens. I, I hear a lot of people post-win talk about, about how the process is the most important thing. Um, and people who haven't won.
Cool. So that's part of our campaign to support the summer collection of, of John John Florence, where we focused around three pillars of natural health. Um, that was really about psychological resilience, and that's what allows John John to compete at the absolute top of his game, whether he's free surfing or whether he's in competition. Um, in the yang to the yin of that, John John's actually returning to the Olympics um, later this year. So towards the end of July um, opens the window. Surfing is not something like tennis where you can just rock up and the tennis court's always there. Um, the field moves and you need to await the right swell. So there's a swell window um, in Tihupu in uh, Tahiti. Uh, thankfully, we're not ho having to host it in Paris, um, but it's going to be an incredible um, pinnacle of, of the sport with the biggest platform an athlete can be granted. Um, the IOC do impose really strict restrictions, so there's no logos on the boards, etc. cetera, um, but Asher and the biome team have been cooking up a, a little something. So should he be on the podium, which he's got a very high chance of being because it's a wave that he's very familiar with, very much at home with, having grown up on, and living on the north shore of Hawaii, um, should he make the podium, he'll be wearing a pair of custom uh, Hawaiian flag-inspired Vivo biomes, which in itself will uh, be a catalyst to press and a lot of earned media, which would be an incredible opportunity. Um, but stepping away from the Olympics today, actually a lot more pros are stepping away from competitive surfing. Just this year, some of the absolute greats of uh, Carissa Moore, uh, Steph Gilmore, Felipe Toledo, these names might not mean anything to everyone, but they are literally the world's great surfers across men's and women's championship tour. They've stepped away from the tour because it takes its toll on psychological resilience. As, um, as John John said, uh, surfing at a competitive level is, is tough and it's selfish and it's not that sustainable. Um, so we're looking into the Winter 24 campaign and really building this narrative around um, the, the question of actually whether um, deep exploration of the great outdoors and in wild places is actually the route to unlocking and accessing our greatest human potential rather than just competing for, for a place on a podium. Um, nice. Um, so, I don't know how to get out of that. Oh, there you go. Um, so that is, I'm not going to go into uh, the narrative too much or the product, but... Um, that is a little taster of John John Florence uh, for the immediate future in summer when that new collection launches, backed up by psychological resilience, uh, sleep, and movement, um, which is looking great. And into winter, um, questioning whether actually going deeper into nature can help us go deeper into ourselves. Um, and on that, I'll pass over to James for outdoor. <laughs> Welcome, hi. You know, I'll just fall over that. Well, I'm James. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much to the, uh, our customers. Uh, also, our distributors are not here as well, and everyone who's joining the live stream. Um, I had the great pleasure to take you through the outdoor line today. And I've been on a regenerative process myself, having been also in the commercial team and now into, into outdoors. But I've been working in product for, a, I'd say, over 25 years. So I'm going to take you through next. Oh. First off, our strategy. So I wanted to literally tell you a little bit more about our plans and how we'll be bringing the outdoor uh, category to life and taking people into nature. So our idea is really to make sure that we become the customer's most loved natural outdoor footwear brand. That's what we're trying to do as a, as a team. I think on the financials, you can see there's definitely a growth curve there with those financials in terms of units and also with, with the revenue. But we really need to look at where our objectives lie. And this sort of works across all our, our functions of design development and also into the other areas as well. So really focus, I'm looking at Connor here there, is really, really focusing on our V matrix and making sure that we really, with any new introductions, we, we look at 60% or 6 out of 10 for all our new shoes. We're looking at minimums of 5,000 a colour, 20,000 a style, and really trying to raise the contribution for the following year from where we are in e-com from 30% up to 31. What we also want to do as a team is really try to help uh, really get the women into the outdoors uh, and really increase that mix from 26% up to 33, but at the same time try to help and listen to our, our customer and ensure that we, our returns rates go down from where they are 
on some of those high, higher levels down to something that's a little bit uh, more manageable. And then I'm looking at Rosie and our supply chain team. The focus for us, and I think we've made some really good progress this year, is actually to try and reduce our lead times as well. So I can't take credit for all the great work the outdoor team has done already before me, but we have a really great customer rationalised range. So we're focusing on ESC, we're focusing on hike, like hike, trail and into uh, ultra and amphibious ranges. So I think we've got a great offer here and that's what you'll see us being focusing on for future seasons. Um, for our finance guys and the finance team in the room, we're looking at improving our, our gross margins really by trying to look at and establishing some higher ASP, so product we'll be introducing to the range which will have higher, higher prices. Really talk about the value of Vivo. That's something that when we look at the ReVivo as well, realising that at the end of life that our shoes can be uh, repaired or recycled and focusing also on our, our costing with our supply chain partners and material suppliers. Uh, what you will see over the lot and you have seen is uh, definitely a focus into improving our wear testing and that also helping us reduce those returns as well because we know that has a massive effect also on our, our distributors and also our B2B partners. Um, and then Team America, uh, really focusing on USA and opening, opening up the outdoors uh, to our USA partners as well is something that I think we can, we can grow on. As you know, I don't live in the UK, but we know it's the outside of uh, rainy London or rainy UK. There's a, a whole world of outdoors there that isn't just uh, a little bit wet. Uh, as I said, also we're opening up the, the outdoors for, for women. Okay, so I'm going to go into the details now, and if there's any questions, please just uh, maybe we can leave them to the end. But as we go along, we'll start with the JGF Winter Collection. And as, as uh, Ollie has said there for our Winter Collection, then we've been teaming up with uh, uh, John John Florence to bring a uh, product that works across all his activities, um, across the complete range from outdoor into, into performance as well. So the first shoe, we have is the Tracker Textile AT John John Florence um, colorway. So this, this, and I think you saw the board short earlier, right? With John John Florence there with his board short. This is the uh, red okra earth brown colorway. Um, and specifically when, we, when we're working on the, um, the Tracker Textile AT, this is a product that's 100% waterproof. So the upper materials there has a membrane construction in there, which is tape seamed. And the, uh, the materials on the upper, 100% waterproof, plus also non-water absorbent. Um, key things also for this shoe is the lacing system, so it's easy to lace up and down if it, you're, you're wet or cold, um, with also the, the round construction there to give you protection against anything, um, any sort of obstructions you may have for it, twigs, be it wet rocks or whatever it would be you're, you're going up against. But when you look at the outsole as well, really it's the all-terrain outsole that we have for grit, whatever the conditions. So this is a really, really great shoe for all terrain conditions in that John John uh, Florence colorway. And we also have another uh, obsidian colorway for, that complements that collection. So come up and have a look at the end of, end of the, uh, uh, the presentation. Next up is, I keep pressing that way. Yeah, we are. The Explorer Mid John John Florence edition. So now if you, you know what it's like, if you get cold and you get wet, you can't perform out there. So when you're actually hiking or um, out in the wilds, you need to keep yourself warm. So the Explorer uh, Mid is one of our key um, styles to keep yourself warm. And specifically in there, we have a, a Prima Loft um, insulation construction there, non-water absorbent uh, materials as well. So when the when temperature drops, then you can keep yourself uh, warm and, and performing. Again, you can see with the AT uh, outsole, uh, the AT outsole, we have grit, whatever the conditions, plus also with that rounded construction as well. So I don't know if you've tried this one on yet, but if you, if, if you sold it, and I'm looking at Max there because he's sold a lot of these in already, uh, specifically it's really w warm and cozy, but you're definitely keeping able to perform um, in, in the coldest of, of conditions. And we also have on this, uh, also have a snow leopard um, uh, print which works with Christie's um, uh, out, uh, lifestyle range on the wall there. So we have a nice colourway story and, and printed story, graphic story that works across multiple uh, SKUs.
Thank you. Yeah, so I think... Um, right. Yeah. How do I do this? Can you help me on that? Just click on it. Okay. Right, okay, you have to help me with this. Oh, you can see it. Right, right, okay, there we go. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. So, um, I've done a couple of swim runs, and you saw me there last year um, at Bantham. Uh, and I feel that obviously, swim runs and our partnership with Attilo's really helped bring to life a product that's specifically for and, and made for swim run. But this uh, Hydra actually works across some of the toughest wet and um, muddy conditions out there. Key features on this is that it has 100% non-water absorbent materials in there. So you compare it versus some of the competition from other brands, then this shoe, especially in and out of the water, dries really, really quickly and doesn't have a lot of, of, of a wet weight there. Uh, but as some of us have known, when you're, doing, you're going in and off out of the, the water on some of that wet rock, grip is, is really, really important. And when you look at the, the outsole of our partnership with Michelin, then definitely with the outsole grip you have uh, with those, those lugs and also the siphoning to stop water and any mud clug, uh, clugging up in there, then you can have the confidence to perform in and out of the water. Um, also, you have the recycled polyester lace lock and the recycled polyester also on the knitted construction. It's really, really, really comfortable underfoot. Um, so it works also in spring run, but also in some of the, 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 the toughest wet and muddy conditions. Yeah. Um, then I think the shoe that we don't actually, fortunately, don't have a, a sample for me here is the, the Tracker Winter 2 SG, but I have seen people wear it around this um, conference already. Um, the Tracker Winter is one of our best selling styles. So I think I remember this was one of our top uh, selling lists that we had there. I'm looking at Mandy, uh, but for the autumn selling, and we were carrying over the Obsidian and the Bracken. And the key feature of this shoe is, is, is the warmth. Um, and w the warmth when it gets chilly. You have seen on the upper construction there, you have a felt lining. We've got the thermal insole and an easy uh, friction-free lacing system. But the, the secret of this product is it's got the, the, the soft ground outsole. So it really gives you grip in those wet and cold, muddy conditions. And that soft ground outsole, um, uh, it has ultimate grip. So you can see that also with the obsidian and also the, the Bracken colorway for uh, this season. Next up is the, the Tracker Leather AT. Um, again, this is a, a product that we've, we updated uh, recently based off the Tracker FG franchise. Uh, one of our top performing um, shoes for, La, for, for autumn. We've carried over these colorways into the, the current season with the obsidian and also the tan. Um, this doesn't have a membrane construction on this one, unfortunately, but the leather construction that you have with the rounded, rounded and also the workwear-inspired laces with also the, the metal eyelets there means it's really, really durable, but also means that you, it, it performs uh, in the toughest conditions. Uh, but it's really comfortable in foot with the, 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 the wild high construction with it there and also, again, the, uh, the Tracker AT outsole that we have on it. So very, very hard wearing and really easy for us to um, repair at the end of life through Revivo. And then we also have the, the low construction in two great colorways. Thanks, Ollie. There we are. Yeah, we have also the, uh, the bracken, also the, uh, the dark olive. Um, same uh, leather materials, same construction. Um, Non-waterproof uh, but water-resistant materials, uh, and specifically there. Then, as we know, this is a, a style that has has really worked within sort of central and southern Europe, and other other areas in in terms of the US, and uh, because we know the low cuts really work in those of B two B and wholesale channels as well. It's just, I think it's just catching up, isn't it? There we are. Tracker Textile AT. Yeah, I think this had... Oh, yes. Yeah, it has a water resistant, yeah. A, waterproof. waterproof on that one. Yeah, agreed. 
Uh, and then we look at the tracker textile AT, I think this was number two on our, or number two or three on our top sellers for, for autumn in terms of pre-sale. Classic textile construction of this, of, of this product. Um, and I think really it's key but is about the, the versatility, versatility of it. Non-water absorbent materials and it's very, very lightweight on your foot. Um, and it has uh, that rit stop upper there that is, has the, has the um, DWC0 DWR finish on it with the rand and then with the, um, the AT outsole there for, for grip. Yeah. And then I think you're, you're actually modeling those shoes, aren't you there, Ollie? Yeah, so the tracker, uh, the tracker mock is one of our, I have to say, one of our nicest looking shoes I think that the team have put together. Uh, great looking style. I think that moccasin construction that you have with the round here, it performs on the trail and also down onto the streets as well. Um, it has a little bit more of a, a workwear inspired look that does something different on that, out, out, uh, that outdoor wall. Um, and this taro leather construction with the combination of non-water absorbent materials, including in this one a nice felt lined tongue. Uh, keeps you uh, warm and protected from trail to street. So yeah, I think this is going to be a future modern classic to the um, to our outdoor range. And this season, it's available in that new uh, new town Callaway. So moving on, I want to take you through uh, ESC. So ESC is our ecological survival collection. Um, and I think from um, the work that uh, definitely um, the team have done is, is really focused and really focused in onto the biome, biomes and really that ESC is the pinnacle product within our range and helps you to, to really just being designed to survive and thrive in some of the world's most sort of extreme conditions. Um, and the hero of the shoe is the Tundra ESC. So I'm not, if you can see here that the, 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 the shoe here, the Tundra shoe has been designed with uh, specifically some of our toughest uh, survival experts. I'm looking at Jenny, you were there in Canada as well with the team, uh, with Ben McNutt as well. And we was, this product's been developed and tested in some of the most extreme conditions. Uh, and this was in Canada with using also some of the indigenous um, footwear constructions. So you, what you'll see on this product here is has a complete 100% canvas uh, execution on it here. It has a, I won't get it out, but you can come and see it afterwards. It has a felt lined uh, booty construction inside. Um, and that felt line is actually 15 millimeters thick to really keep you warm in those snowy conditions. And um, we combine that also with the Michelin outsole. And yeah, it's a big boy. Um, designed for that ultimate grip in snow and uh, icy condition of the foot. And then when you're really cold, you're going to make sure that you have friction-free uh, lacing system there. Because if, you, if your gloves and the extreme conditions, the last thing you want to do is to take off your um, gloves to uh, fasten your laces. I know Lee isn't here. He's, uh, he's in uh, St. Lucia wearing his budgie smugglers at the moment. So... <laughs> It's quite ironic that this is his, his, his baby and he's done a really good job with it. So I'll pass that on to you there. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, I'm sporting the Tracker Forest ESC and I would say this, this, is, a, this is my go-to product of going out into those more wet and um, muddy conditions. And we know that the work that we've done in terms of with Wild Human and trying to bring in this product together it's, it's one of our best sellers, and I think it's, it's a real expedition take on the tracker using water resistant materials, wide hide upper. We've got the Michelin outsole there for ultimate grip. And as we always do for winter, we, uh, we come back with the, with the obsidian uh, material, with the obsidian colorway alongside the proven best selling bracken. Yeah. Passing also on to our Magnet ESC. So Magnet ESC is our, our hero shoe in our light hike range. Uh, we know it's a best-selling style for uh, men, but also for women. Um, and this is really about us bringing um, trekking and fast packing and some of that speed elements to, to life um, within that category. 
We have a lot of the uh, same sort of material uh, composition with the wild hide leather, but also when you look at the collar construction with this um, nice wool, wool uh, construction, this is actually certifiable wool mark as well. That knitted collar with that uh, um, wild hide leather gives a really durable um, execution for the customer and the person who's, who's using that product outside, but it also helps with the breathability too. And again, with the proven um, uh, ESC outsole for ultimate grip on those fast uh, packing conditions. Next up is the Magnolite uh, water resistant. And I've seen a lot of people wearing this shoe. I know, Max, you think this is one of the best selling shoes or best product we have, right? It ultimately makes really about making somebody and the customer be able to move fast and light, whatever the weather. So when you look at the shoe here with the upper construction, we have a combination of the, the same uh, Magna uh, Walmart uh, knitted upper construction with the ripstop. Um, but this is also in combination with uh, the lacing system, but also the uh, versatility of that soft ground outsole for grip. This is 100% um, animal free, so we can call it uh, a vegan, a vegan uh, product. And it comes, uh, we have the trickle black that carries over, but we're coming actually also with this lovely sharp colorway for um, winter 24 as well. And one of my favorites is, is the Primus. So I, luckily I came, in, I came uh, into Bristol a little bit early on Monday, and I think I've showed a couple of videos there. I was actually out running in, in, in some of the, the muddy conditions out there, and Primus is my go-to shoe. And I think it's really one of the gateway products to, um, to Vivo and our customer out there. Um, and I, I know most people also, when they look at the Primus Trail, it's, it gives a little bit more versatility to the normal Primus range. And that always tends to be the shoe that I sort of, sort of recommend as a, as a starter shoe to, to Vivo. Um, and then we have for the 3.5s, I think this is probably a story that we're going to be dialing up a little bit more for future seasons. But the 3.5 was a re-engineering project for the team to really help to try and bring a product and try and bring Primus Trail to life um, with a step towards a circularity. Um, and that re-engineering started from top to bottom. So really when you look at the, the, the materials on the upper here, we have uh, we tried to really focus on a mono material approach with the materials being made out of recycled polyester, uh, but it's very, very, very hard wearing. Uh, we have a recycled polyester lacing system here as well. And then when you look at the, uh, the midsole and the outsole, the midsole, the outsole here, we have the four millimeter lugs, which really perform on those firm ground conditions, but also in, I mean, really when you're going into sort of more hard and rocky uh, conditions underfoot. So for me, where I live, it's maybe not so muddy, but it's a perfect shoe for, for, for tougher conditions. And it's also complemented also with the, with the Primus Lite 3.5 as well. Um, and we'll be telling more about that Primus uh, 3.5 story um, in future seasons going forward. And Jamie will take you through the Primus Lite 3.5 um, later. But if you need something that's a little bit tougher, um, because uh, the weather conditions out there are a little bit rainier. Then we have the uh, Primus All Weather FG as well. Consistently, one of our best selling shoes throughout the range. So when we look at our e-com sales, the Primus Trail Free All Weather FG is at the top of the list. And what makes it a little bit more um, better for those rainy conditions is we have a 100% water resistant upper and using the proven uh, ripstop conditions, uh, rip, ripstop material here with the recycled polyester lace construction. It's just a little bit more hard raining if you're caught, hard wearing if you're caught out with rain or rainy conditions. Again, coupled with the uh, foam ground outsole there as well. And that's definitely one of the uh, secret uh, winners in, within our range. And we also have a, the lovely pebble colorway there um, you can come and see the wall later, but that's a lovely pebble, pebble colourway also to complement it for um, uh, winter as well. There we go. Thank you. And then if you look at something that you want a little bit more 
comfort on your foot, then the Primus Knit FG uh, helps with, with that level of, of breathability and uh, level of comfort um, against, uh, against your foot. And that knitted construction is a go-to um, for me, uh, just because if it gets hotter or warmer, then that knitted construction with the breathability zones within the upper helps, helps with uh, moisture management. It's 100% uh, recycled polyester knit construction with the uh, lace lock, with the, uh, the midfoot uh, TPO, TPO overlays, again, with the proven um, FG outsole. We have three amazing colorways for this season. We have the obsidian sandstone. Uh, we have the ultimate gray, which is really, I think, very, very commercial for everybody out there. And the soothing sea that you'll see throughout the range. And I know Jamie's been painting the walls to make sure that the soothing sea is a, a color palette throughout the complete uh, offer. Here we go. Thank you. And yeah, and the final shoe I would say there is the is the, is the uh, Trail F2 FG. Uh, we have the, the best-selling obsidian way colorway, but for also we have the shark colorway that which you saw with the Magna and throughout the, the rest of the range, which we're able to bring to life. And we will be focusing also on trying to update this product in, in, in upcoming seasons. But proven bestseller and will always um, sell very well with uh, uh, wholesale distributors and with our customers uh, alike. So I can't take any of the credit of the, of the product uh, range uh, that the team have brought together, but this I think gives you um, and our customers a, so many opportunities to be selling our product across multi-channels and to different customers, from our soil seekers all the way up to our perf uh, performance pioneers. And I will say then that the, the rationalized range from ESC to hike to like hike down into trail and also into ultra really means you have a rationalized range and we'll be growing on that into in, in future seasons. So um, thank you very much and uh, happy selling. Hello, hello. Hello to everyone on YouTube. Hi, mum and dad. Thank you for, for tuning in. Um, I don't actually know if they're there. I hope, hope not. Um, I am the new Active Performance PLM, so I'm kind of starting this week. Um, so I'm going to take you through, through all the kind of fantastic stuff that we have. Um, I'll take you through Motus first, which is our kind of training shoe, um, kind of perfect for in the gym. Um, and then our Primus range, which is our, our barefoot running. Um, so, without further ado, that way? maybe with further ado, <laughs> the Motus Strength. I believe is down there. Um, now, first of all, I want to say um, thank you to everyone who, who was involved in this. This had a lot of ambassadors, um, a lot of, of athletes that, that kind of put energy into this shoe. Um, and as actually a Vivo record holder um, for our, our best selling shoe within a week. Um, so, thank you to everyone who was involved in that. Um, this shoe is incredible for your kind of your weightlifting, um, your. Um, can I go to my notes? Um, for yeah, for kind of weightlifting, powerlifting, um, and was also mentioned in Men's Health magazine as one of the best barefoot um, lifting shoes. It was also given five stars by T3 magazine, um, and this was mainly because of the outsole. Um, this outsole, if you've if you've not interacted with this shoe, um, is a is an incredible outsole that makes you feel really really rooted to the ground, um, and kind of holds you firm as as you're lifting. Um, going to the back of the shoe, we've got this kind of. TPU heel piece. Uh, this is 57% bio-based um, and obviously holds your foot kind of very securely as you're lifting. Uh, moving towards the front of the shoe, uh, we've obviously got this overlay. This is a KPU. Um, it is 58% bio-based KPU. Um, and this has been integrated into the shoe to help with kind of climbing up ropes, any kind of CrossFit stuff that you're doing, really holds your foot in place um, and, and is just lovely aesthetically. Uh, then moving on to the mesh, uh, we've got a lovely, lovely open mesh. This helps keep your foot nice and cool um, as, you're, as you're exercising. So this will be dropping in two colorways. Um, so obviously your bright white and your obsidian. And these are two kind of core colorways um, that obviously sell very, very well. Um, and we'll be looking to continue this, this Motus story as we go. So um, moving on to the Motus Flex. 
if I just give you this back, and the lovely soothing sea that the walls have been painted to. Um, this Motus Flex is, is the Motus Strength sibling. Um, and the reason I say sibling is because it's been designed and developed in a very similar way. Um, it's been designed by athletes um, for the people who are going to use this. So kind of people who are doing yoga, uh, Pilates, animal flow, calisthenics. If we look to the outsole of this shoe, uh, you've got this kind of, I'll take it out. Um, this lovely kind of flexibility, uh, the decoupled outsole broken into four different components um, allows you to really flex your foot. Uh, we move to the knitted upper. This is a one-piece knitted upper. Um, now, I'm a firm believer that this shoe doesn't need laces. The knitted upper on this really just holds your foot in place, keeps you feeling nice and strong. Um, and then moving on to this lovely heel piece at the back. This heel piece at the back um, just protects your, protects your Achilles, essentially. If you're doing bar work with calisthenics, um, this just kind of keeps you safe when you're not digging your, your heel. Um, I'll pass that back to you, James. Moving away from the Motus family uh, now, but the Motus family is growing, um, and we do have a, a new Motus proposition that we're not ready to present yet, uh, but is in the works, and the Motus family will continue to grow. Um, so kind of be ready for it. It's going to be, it's going to be an exciting, exciting kind of family of shoes. Um, this will be dropping, as I said, kind of soothing sea, and then obviously your bright white and your obsidian uh, being those strong core colorways. Um, but yeah, I think the soothing sea my personal opinion is the reason I picked the wall color, is, is a very beautiful shoe. So moving, oh, let's do that. moving on to the Primus Light Knit. Um, this is a great barefoot runner, just a very, very comfortable shoe. Um, again, Soothing Sea, um, which is over there. Um, we've also got this lovely frosted minted leopard colorway, um, which kind of James alluded to, um, and will be alluded to later on as we, as we enter into um, kind of uh, just active um, range. This has, a, again, similar to the Motus, a lovely knitted upper, um, perfect for those kind of 5K, 10K runs, kind of keeping you, keeping you comfortable as you're running. It's also kind of paired with that four millimeter outsole, very barefoot feeling with a Primus uh, performance insole, uh, perfect for kind of those runs. Um, and yeah, just a, a very good shoe. Um, so yeah, this will be dropping kind of throughout the year in midnight, bright white and obsidian. Um, and then towards the end of the year, we've got our frosted minted leopard and our soothing sea. Um, and then moving on to the OG. Uh, now I believe this shoe, I can take zero credit for this shoe. This shoe has been around sin since before I was born. <laughs> um, but is, is an incredible shoe um, and um, is also dropping in those same three colorways that, that we're seeing in the Primus Light Knit. Um, so your Midnight, your Bright White, and your Obsidian. Um, there's not much else I can kind of add to this shoe in terms of like what this shoe does. This is an incredible barefoot running shoe. Uh, that four millimeter outsole, that kind of Primus performance insole um, is, is just an excellent shoe. Um, this is made of vegan materials, but it's not yet vegan certified, uh, but we are working on, on that. Um, moving on, oh, actually, just before we do move on, um, James obviously had spoken about, I don't know where it is, the 3.5. Yeah. We obviously do still have the 3.5 in the, in the light version. Yeah. Cool, and then the last one, this is my favorite shoe because I'm from Scotland, <laughs> um, and the rain kind of gets my feet wet if I use the normal Primus light. Uh, but this, again, another, another incredible shoe, kind of before my time, but, but kind of excellent nonetheless. Great for those long runs, great for kind of, you just want to go on a cold run, muddy puddles, and your feet still stay nice and warm. Um, lovely ripstop over the top. Very, very similar design language to the outdoor. Uh, but again, with that kind of outsole, insole, uh, making this a perfect running shoe. So yeah, that is me. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> This footwear won't make you powerful. Or make you stronger. This footwear won't make you run faster or further.
This footwear won't improve your performance. Training barefoot will. And if you can't be barefoot, be Vivo barefoot. quite an epic way to transition from performance to lifestyle. Hi everyone, I'm Christy. I've met people throughout the day. I started at Vivo in January, so I'm also new to product. I think we're all three newbies, so be kind to us. Um, and I'm going to take you through the lifestyle collection for winter. So we have to think about what winter means and how, how as the season we're transitioning to the colder months with our natural health hero customer in mind. Hmm. Let me just check. Oh, <laughs> I've actually got a PC, so I'm actually not very good at this kind of thing. Am I just clicking? Okay, cool. Off to a good start. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to say is that, okay, we're talking about winter and what does this mean? Firstly, we want to build momentum within the boots category. We're already performing very, very well. So how can we leverage on this as we transition from autumn to winter? And this will be focused around the Gobi franchise. And additionally to this, we really want to reinforce our sneakers category. So this is our true wardrobe rotation. And I think this is probably, of every silhouette, the product that we own the most of, generally. And this is really, the focus for the season is around the Gobi sneaker. So we have this silhouette in leather. We also have our pinnacle iteration of it, which Gala had mentioned earlier. And I can tell you the percentage, we're at 98% natural for this product. So it's a huge, huge achievement. And like a little clap and something that we all, <laughs> yes. So thank you everyone involved. So a huge achievement and what we want to roll out further, especially when we head to mid to long term to 25 and beyond. And Win With Women, something I'm very passionate about. We have her in mind as we continue to drop new colorways for winter and we really want to excite and entice here. Um, so these are the focuses. So if we jump into the product and we start with the Gobi Hyper, I think this is a product that really has created a lot of buzz already and we're kicking it off in autumn 24. So how do we gain a little bit more momentum when we head into winter? So this is our most winterized boot in the collection and it's inspired by the iconic puffer jacket. So it's designed with these slick angled paneling and it has this curved rubber overlay. So that's offering both natural rhythm and protection. And material-wise, we continue with this theme of protection. So we have a water-resistant external, and we have a Primaloft lining. And we also have the thermal insole. So this is where form really merges with functionality to create this barefoot, I would say, stylish utility. And what's new for winter? So here we introduce two new colorways. You've got the Olive Night, which have on the sample, and we're also playing into animal print, which I think everyone, um, both Jamie and James, have mentioned. So this is our first woman-specific take on a print, and it's inspired by the Snow Leopard, so it has that kind of roots to nature, and it's being trialed on three styles within the collection, as you'll see across the lifestyle, outdoors, and also performance we have uh, the opportunity to win with her by building relevancy in the market with this timeless graphic. And when you see it in performance, I mean, with outdoor and lifestyle, you'll have this charcoal black. The Explorer is going to be more black in tone. It's not 100% correct on your SMS. And we have the sporty pop in performance with the mint, which I also personally really love. So we're using winter really as a stage to test and learn as we introduce, I think for her, an alternative to mono color. So let's see how we do and then more to come. And now I'm gonna take you through the rest of the Gobi boot options. So this is kind of the key 
franchise within Boots, and we want to nurture growth within the autumn winter season. So for winter, we firstly have the Gobi lace-up boot. So this is really the perfect transitional product. It has premium unlined wild hide upper. Um, and I think the sample is en route because we probably forgot it when we... Perfect, so the white is on its way. So we have this beautiful wild hide leather. We also have the same curved pitch in terms of pattern that echoes the sole. And what is great is we launched this in autumn 23, and in the first four weeks we sold over 5,000 pieces. So we know that this style, yes, it was great. So we know that there's an appetite, and we really want to fulfill that appetite. So we're really also on the way to establishing this as like a true essential product. So again, watch the space as we head into 25. And it's also not worth noting that we have the opportunity to sell Beyond Black, which is against Merchandising 101, but it is the limestone was one of the highest sellouts, particularly with her. So this is where we can drive color, authenticity, and have a little bit of fun when we're playing in this category. And we also offer, so we're really proving our credentials here, so we also offer a warm line version of this shape. So this is particularly relevant for the cold doors, and I'm looking at Max as well, because Germany loves this type of product. So the tan colorway, again, was the fastest selling color. It actually beat the black in this style. So it shows that there is the demand for color variety, lining of variety, um, so we can really be authoritative when it comes to the Gobi. And the third style I'm gonna go into is the Gobi Chelsea. So again, this is another classic in the making. It's in this kind of tumble feeling wild hide leather and you have um, the obsidian and then also the cinnamon. It's got again the over ownable curved line, so I'll repeat it, but I think this is going to be one of the key like non-branded signifiers we can go after in the range. And what is great about the Chelsea is it's super easy so you've got the wraparound elastic with the easy pull on and off. And the Chelsea is the time of timeless classic. This silhouette is our best selling silhouette for boots. So this really is an easy um, style for both men and women. And the warm line version I'm showing here, it's just a bit of a FYI, but the warm lining currently in the SMS is starting here. It will be up to the collar for production. So you really have that full, um, insulation. This is a faux shearling that we're currently playing with in a lighter tone and you've got the Chelsea that matches back to the Gobi boot lace up as well. Oh, so, oh, yeah. I can't, yeah, there's always an IT issue. <laughs> so just to round off the Gobi franchise, we actually have 12 colorways across three styles in the line. So we've got a really strong foundation for the 24 season. And we know that we want to, again, build on this when we go into 25. In saying that, we also have Oh, my notes have gone poorly. <laughs> so, so, okay, I'm, I've got a true test because I'm just going to have to wing it now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope I know it. Um, please don't correct me if I do screw it up. So, we have the Geo Chelsea. This was a request from the sales teams to add it back in. And I think it shows when we talked about the Gobi, it's a little bit more rugged in terms of interpreta interpretation. Um, this is a little bit more office friendly and I think there is really an opportunity to expand on this sleeker look particularly in that casual area as we move forward so you see it as a carryover this season and then for autumn 25 we're really going to build into this space where we want our barefoot our barefoot consumer to wear barefoot products at every kind of stage of their day-to-day 
And then we move on to the Ra and the Gobi Lux. So we've launched these for spring 24. The Ra Tam is selling super, super well. So it's in our top five sellers so far and it's launched this month. So it shows that there's an appetite for this pinnacle product. So this is the take up of a, a Vivo Essential. So you've got made in Portugal, you've got the V profile stitching and this hand burnished effect. So this is an exit, exit price point, but our customer is seeing the value here. So you've got the lace up and then you've also got the partner in crime, which is the Gobi um, based on the desert boot. So really happy to see these results and places that we can stretch the ASP, I think when it's known product known to the consumer customer. And we have the takedown version. So we also carry over the Ra 4 we're up to and then the Gobi 4 and you've got them in the Obsidian and the Bracken as well. Okay, so next we move on to our sneakers category. In terms of sellout, I just checked it before, but this sneakers, they're in our top five. They're all sneakers at the moment. So we really, this should be an all year round product that we can nail. This is our special style, the 98% natural Gobi sneaker premium. So what, why is this 98% natural? So first off, we have chrome-free leather upper, we have the pliant gum sole, and actually a lot of the foam that you use in product footwear is really bad for the environment, so this actually has a natural foam as well. So I think it's a really incredible achievement to get to that, get to that 98%, and this is where we can take the learnings and roll them out. This style has not officially launched, but it is on the website, so it's kind of available to buy, and actually the sales have been incredible. So I've just checked today, so week to date, we've sold over 300 pieces, and what is even better is it's pretty evenly split between men and women as well. So I think this could be a future icon in the making. So that is fab news, and I'm loving to see all the smiles as well as I talk about this. We also have the little sister, the little brother to this style, which is the Gobi sneaker, formerly known as the everyday sneaker. What is worth noting about these is they're both the basketball shape, so it's really that court style, a uh, classic, um, that we haven't really catered to before, so it's great to see that, that cus our customer is really resonating towards this. So this is our takedown, it's more of an opening price point, you've got our classic leathers, you've got a pipe top line, and we play in this kind of monochrome effect, so full dip dyed across three colours, you've got the limestone, the tan, and also the obsidian here. What is a little bit wrong in the sample is it's not going to be this very organic uh, honeycomb branding, it's going to be instead a blind embossed. A blind emboss, which is very similar to this product, which is the Senses. So I think this also is a great one for a little bit of an explanation. So this is our most barefoot sole yet. So very, very low profile, but with this very, very cool choke back detailing. And you've also got this exposed stitch mo moccasin construction. So this launched officially, I'm looking at Caroline, two weeks ago or last week last week and also is selling super, super well. So um, we have the olive, we have the white, and we also have the tan, and they're three of the top five sellers that sit alongside the, the Gobi sneaker. The campaign looks absolutely beautiful. And I went into a store the day before conference and I saw two people trying on that shoe. So I think that also goes to show that, again, it looks different, it looks new, and we can excite with this innovative kind of look and feel. So again, something we want to expand going forward. What we're introducing for winter is also the Falcon, which is this beautiful gray. It's a little bit richer and more saturated, but perfect for winter. And that will sit alongside the tan. And we have also a couple of essential classics, the Geocourt 3. This style continually sells out well, which I think goes to show, we haven't done anything to it, but the opportunity for sneakers. So I think we can take these learnings and I really want to kind of, yeah, build on this in spring 25 when we've got some exciting product coming as well. So you've just got the classic white and when also for the Primus, so Jamie 
talked through like the exciting product there, but we have some essential carryovers here. So we have the Asana 3, and we also have the leather version, and this had an updated leather for autumn, so it's got, it's really a kind of evolution. It's got this beautiful tumbled effect, and it's got a much more premium look and feel. So this was the product for winter. Um, what I wanted to end on, because I think it's very, very nice, is the census campaign. So I would say whoever, whoever hasn't seen it, you get the opportunity to see kind of where we're going in the world of lifestyle um, with Bevo. So thank you everyone. And next up is Katie to talk through kids. Hi everyone, um, I'm Katie, the kids product lead. I know we've all been sat down for quite a while now, but um, I'm gonna present the kids collection and then shortly we'll be walking around the woods stretching, stretching our limbs again. Um, before I get into the winter 24 collection, oh, I have lost my notes, God. <laughs> right, I'll try this my best. Um, I wanted to start with reflecting back on last winter, so talking through some of the sales highlights um, and how we've used those and taken those learnings into shaping this winter collection, but also into 2025. Um, so starting, our first highlight on Lumi. Um, so Lumi FG this winter just gone soared. So 160% up year on year. And that was driven by a couple of things. So most importantly, earlier delivery. We planned this product to come and start trading from August, um, I think from memory without my notes, um, August, and then Laura also did a great job with our back to school campaign. Instead of just focusing that on black uniform school shoes, we kind of expanded the message this season and we included all products. Um, and the Lumi featured as the kind of hero in the assets that uh, were more targeted at progressive education communities such as forest schools. We think that really helped the Lumi sales um, year on year. It, it, perform globally, but Lumi was 28% um, of a mix in Germany, which versus um, an average across the kids' collection is a really high mix um, for our German market across the collection. Um, second kind of highlight I wanted to talk to was on our Primus Ludo High. Um, so again, on Primus Ludo High, our sales tripled, um, which was driven by earlier delivery. This product started trading from July, so again, was a really peak part of our back to school campaign. Um, and it had a really strong performance in America, which was 38% of our sales mix, which again is, is really, really high for us um, at a style level. Um, and then lastly, from a highlight point of view, Primus Sport. Primus Sport is our kind of equivalent to Primus Light in the kids collection, so it's a really key player for us. Um, again, driven by back to school, but it was 25% of our sales mix, which as a collection of nine products, 25% on one shoe is again really high for us. And Catherine would have added a caveat that we were out of stock in some key back to school weeks on a couple of our sizes and main colors. So we really feel like um, with better stock on this product, that could have been even more successful. However, sometimes doesn't always go to plan. And one kind of area I wanted to acknowledge that we've taken a couple of learnings from was on our Pluma. So we launched Pluma last winter as a first walker and it was fantastic in first walking sizes and toddlers, but where it wasn't, it wasn't as big a success story was in preschool. So our preschool sizes are around age two to four. Pluma is a really simple knitted sock to make it so great for first walkers and as flexible um, as the design was planned to be but the knit is quite lightweight, it's not water resistant, and we've got the cutout on the sole. So we found with um, the, the pre-walker sizes, uh, preschool sizes, age two to four, the sales weren't as strong as we'd hoped for, so we really need to consider functionality um, and how parents are choosing their footwear around both warmth and waterproofing moving forward. 
So what did we do with all of those insights um, and what are we doing with them for this collection and further into 2025? So firstly, earlier delivery, uh, making sure we get those boots in on time to hit those peak back to school weeks. Our back to school period was up 54% year on year and also including boots within that peak period really helped to drive an increase in our ASP year on year for, for that, those peak weeks. Um, again, wider back to school reach, so from a marketing point of view, making sure that campaign isn't focused on black school shoes and quite a, a UK focus for back to school, but a wider message engaging those broader communities such as forest schools and also appealing to non-uniform markets like America and across Europe. Um, thirdly, as I spoke about on Pluma, really ensuring functionality is is kind of a priority to us. So the way we've done that in these collections is products such as Tracker and our um, Explore products, which I'll go into the details of in a minute, but they've both got those water-resistant textiles or leathers. And then on some of our lifestyle products like Lumi, uh, sorry, Fulham and Ludo High, working on adding those lovely warm shirling linings that we've taken from the adults' lifestyle collection. And then finally, new boots. So really trying, with the success that we've had in boots in this last winter, really trying to diversify our boot offering in 2025. So we've got a lot of work that we're doing behind the scenes where we've taken some of the success stories in adults on the Gobi boot and the Gobi Chelsea and the Gobi sneaker um, and looking at mini-me versions of those so we can offer that mini-me option across adults and kids, but also leverage the lifestyle marketing halo into kids. So talking through the product and their details, first up we've got our Lumi FG. So this is our pull-on kids winter boot. Um, it's made from water resistant textiles on the upper and then it's got a lovely drawstring cord so you can tighten it and stop any kind of snow or debris getting in the top. It's got a full waterproof membrane making it fully waterproof um, and then it's actually gonna be on our firm ground sole for this autumn winter. We had a couple of issues commercializing this product and we wanted to make sure that changing the sole didn't mean this delivered late. As I spoke to, delivery is so key on this product. We've decided to prioritize that and we'll take the update into autumn winter 25. Um, excitingly on this product, you can see um, on the sample in hand and on screen, we've got this lovely forest print. This is in collaboration with kids outerwear brand Muddy Puddles. They are a fellow B Corp um, and their kind of brand mission is to get kids out in nature no matter the weather. So they create these fantastic puddle suits. So they've got this lovely unique design they've created for us which is forest inspired on their puddle suit and it merchandises with our, um, our Lumi print on the grasshopper colorway. And then we've got the two carryover colors of obsidian which is a little bit brighter in the smaller sizes with the pop colored sole and then a little bit more sophisticated in the juniors larger sizes. Then the second boot in our kids outdoor line is our Tracker AT. So this is our first kids hiking boot and a great mini me to our adults best selling boot. Um, it's made with water resistant wild hide leather and then water resistant textiles on the kind of cushioned collar and then up the tongue. Um, what's great about the design, it's got this lovely cutout detail which helps with the boot flexing, um, making sure feet can kind of move and be unrestricted and nice and lightweight. Um, it's got a removable thermal insole, meaning that it can be super warm um, and also a little bit more breathable in summer. And then this is on our brand new AT, stands for Adventure Terrain in kids. Adventure Terrain sole, which is super grippy um, and passing some great wear testing feedback for us at the moment. And it's got the heel webbing, making it easy to pull on. The third product in our kids outdoor line, also brand new this autumn winter, is our Explore AT. Um, so this is our water resistant adventure trainer. We wanted to take all the learnings from our Primus trail, but we've updated it to be in a waterproof mesh, uh, making it really great for all year use. Um, it's got a lovely cushioned heel and a elastic lace, so you can really tighten it and make a lovely adjustable fit. And then it's got the removable insole as well, and also on our adventure terrain outsole. Um, and that's coming in two colors this autumn winter, the outer space with the lovely molten lava pops, and then the bright terracotta. And then moving into our kids' lifestyle collection, firstly, we've got Fulham. So Fulham is our barefoot take on a Chelsea boot. So it's got a lovely wild hide leather upper and then elastic um, gusset and heel webbing to make it easy to pull on. 
It's also got the firmalin sole and the firm ground sole. And then we've got that this season in two versions, the black that I've got on screen, which has just got a kind of um, mesh lining, which makes it great all year round. And then the new falcon color is our full and winterized. And that's where we've updated it with the lovely warm shirling lining um, and making it kind of perfect for the colder months. And then sitting next to Fulham as our other lifestyle boot, we've got our Primus Ludo High. Um, similar story, we've got two materializations. The first on screen is our vegan water resistant um, offering. So that's got the same textiles as the Explore and a PU quarter, which is great for kind of wiping clean. Um, it's also got heel webbings to make it easy, easy to pull on. And then they've got the fixed elastic laces, so there's no tying needed, and the Velcro strap making it really nice to tighten an adjustable fit. Um, and the winterized version, again, has this lovely shirling warm lining and is also the first launch of our Ludo High in the lovely wild hide leather. Then moving into trainers, um, as I said, our, our best-selling trainer is Primus Sport. It's a lightweight mesh, breathable trainer. Um, all the meshes and the linings are 100% recycled polyester. Same with the, the heel webbings, which make it really easy to pull on. Um, the design varies between juniors, which you've got on screen, which has got the elastic lace and the toggle, really easy to tighten, um, and all the kids put on independently. And then our toddlers, preschool and kids have the Velcro, which opens up really easily with the tongue, making it really easy to pull and put on and off. And that's on our multi-terrain sole, which is our most versatile outsole. Sitting next to Primus Sport, we've got our Primus Ludo School, which is our leather-based trainer. Um, so that's also got the fixed elastic laces with the Velcro strap, making it easy to pull on and off and adjust the fit. Uh, full wild hide leather upper, which makes it water resistant, um, and then recycled polyester, textile linings, and heel pulls. Um, this one has been updated to include the thermal insole now, so little feet don't get cold on the playground. Um, and then it's also on our multi-terrain outsole. And then sitting next to Primus Ludo School is Wind School, which is our Mary Jane offering as a girl's school shoe. So it's really simple design. Again, Velcro adjustable strap and the wild hide water resistant leather. Um, and then also on our multi-terrain sole. And then last but not least, the smallest of our collection is Pluma. Um, so Pluma is our shoe design for first walkers. So the most important part of this shoe is it being as flexible as possible for tiny growing feet. Um, the outsole has got this great wrap-up design on the toe for when children at that age are transitioning between walking and crawling and dragging their toes along the ground. Um, and then the upper is a 360 degrees knitted sock, um, which makes it really easy to pull on. And it's made with Tencel yarn, which is a plant-based fiber, making it antibacterial and easy to wear with or without socks. Again, the heel pull on the back for making it easy to pull on little wriggly feet. Um, and that is the end of our kids collection. I think next to hand over to Galahad. <laughs> Hello, does this work? Hello, is it working? Um, thank you, everybody. We are coming to a close of the Winter 24 Vivo Barefoot Sales Conference. But I thought we might have a little bit of audience participation and any feedback, any questions. I was uh, looking at the chat earlier, and there are literally people that have dialed in from all over the world, Paraguay, Latvia, Malaysia, um, the Balkans, Slovenia, Sweden, to name but a few countries. We're all um, listening in. So if there's any, any questions or comments or suggestions um, to any of the team, any, anyone uh, from Jesse, anyone, um, any questions? We have. Uh, a few specific product questions um, oh. around colorways. Um, people are very interested to know about the Motus family and if there's going to be exciting colorways that they can expect in that family. J Jamie, come and, um, come and um, tell us about the future of Motus. 
<laughs> Hello. Um, is that working? Yes. Uh, yes, there will be, not for, for autumn, winter, uh, but for spring, summer, we definitely will be having kind of some more exciting colours. Um, the Motus family is, is something we're heavily backing. Um, it's a great shoe um, and, and a great kind of family of shoes. Can you give a sneak peek as to what spring might behold for Motus? <laughs> <laughs> Testing. I, I personally can't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we do, we do have Motus Light, which is in the works. Um, so this is the, the third shoe in the Motus family. Um, I've realised I'm putting that. Uh, this is the third shoe in the Motus family, and Val is, is working very, very hard on this just now. Um, so you know it's going to be a, an incredible shoe. Um, but just to kind of give you a little snippet into what that is, that is a, a high rocks, kind of, kind of high fitness shoe, moving between weightlifting, kind of shifting to running. Um, just a, an incredible all-round shoe, incredible shoe at that, that kind of high rocks um, stuff. Um, which we believe is a, also a huge market. Uh, this is something that's exploded not only in the UK, uh, but Germany um, and US as well. We have uh, another comment uh, in the comment section from Andrew. Um, this is around athletic shoes, uh, specifically lightweight shoes. So when it comes to minimalist shoes, many customers want lighter styles. Are we working on releasing any lighter models? Oh, yes. Val, I think you should come to the stage. And come on, Val, come to the stage. Val has also prepared a break dance routine. <laughs> no, I have zero ability in breakdancing, so I won't do that. Uh, but I can tell you a little bit about what we are trying to do in terms of weight for our shoes. And um, yeah, to give a little bit of a sneak peek uh, towards 25, uh, that has been one of our key focus. So uh, both in outdoor and in performance, um, and, and later within also, as we talked about, the, the Motus uh, family. Um, so we are experimenting with materials, constrictions, uh, and also to kind of um, remove what's, what's a bit superficial and adding weight. Um, so all of this is a journey uh, towards being light and more regenerative, ultimately. Um, so yeah, exciting things uh, coming. Can you, can, you remember the, can you remember the weight differences between the... Oh, yeah, we've got some massive... So we are, we are defining the future of a, of a Primus for SS25. Um, and basically, we are, we are competing and being even better than the, the big shoe names that you all have in mind. And, um, and yeah, we'll be proud to, to have some shoes that are, that are lower than 150 grams. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be amazing. So we've got two, two more very, very good questions, uh, maybe more related to the Regen team. One is, can we have a bit of an update on the vegan and vegan certification? What products are, and is there any way our customers get that information? Yeah. Who's there the is team? a vegan option. And then I've got <laughs> another question for Tandy, I assume. Okay, but let's get, it's, it's, okay Connor, you good, you good to go on vegan? Uh, yeah, we're, we're currently uh, trying, we're 98% sure, I can say, on the uh, Gobi Premium Canvas style, that we can get that certified by the Vegan Society. Um, every other style on the site currently has a vegan asterisk, and the full definition is on the website. Thank you, Connor. Um, one question, I am going to put Tandy on the spot, and if she's not in here, does yeah. anyone from the Revivo? Okay, Tandy's yes, here. Revivo. When will repair facility be available in Europe? Great update coming your way. Oh. Um, we are currently working on having repairs up and running at the latest by the beginning of April within the EU and also within the US uh, also by the end of April. Coming soon. 
And we're, we're, we're also working closely with the Japanese and the Australians to launch repair centers in those parts of the world as well. Literally the other side of the world. Global repairs. Um, I, uh, here's another question that we get a lot of in the social media comments. So maybe someone <coughs> from the product team can clarify this and why. But will the Chelsea come in men's? This is quite funny because Paulette said, I bet this is about the Chelsea boot. <laughs> So she's, she's got the prediction. We have got so many nice boots for men coming up, and we know that Chelsea is the key style. So yes is the short answer for 25. And last question. We've got a question around biome and uh, appreciation towards our sustainability driving in form of tech. And will there be any more around this topic with a Belena biome by compostable shoe? Will there be any more what? Any more about that topic. So are we planning anything more? Is there anything in our pipeline around this? Um, yeah, so biome is going to launch to the public in early summer. Um, the Belena material won't be the first material used in the biome shoes, but will subsequently be. And then the next part of the Pioneer program is fully mono uh, biome shoes, fully 3D printed, and then introdu you know, uh, introducing the Belena materials um, in due course that are, as you know and seen, fully biodegradable and compostable. Um, and there is frantic testing going on there over and over again so watch this space it's 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 happening it's coming to life um <coughs> starting with the launch in the early summer and then the launch of the monos in the pioneer program shortly after that thank you <laughs> <laughs> it's like very unspecific dates um Okay, anything else? Any, any other questions? Oh, one question. Uh, our collaboration with John John Florence definitely speaks to a lot about what we strive to do, and so, certainly in points of our nine pillars. Are there other ambassadors that we'll be working with in close collaboration like we have with John John Florence, or is it's just going to be our collaboration with him for a very long time? Uh, is Nicholas here? I mean, I, I do roughly know the answer to this. Asher will, Asher's, Asher's not, hasn't made it to this. He would hate it to know that I'm standing on stage answering, <laughs> answering questions about Biome and John John Florence, so <laughs> please don't tell him. <laughs> um, <laughs> is, Nicholas here? is Nicholas here or not? I mean, look, I think the simple answer is, is yes, we plan on working with a lot more uh, ambassadors and, like, Jenny, for example, worked very closely with a, a group of ambassadors going up into the northern Canadian hinterland, um, studying the Mukluk and those um, first people's shoes in, in, in the Arctic to, that ultimately resulted in the tundra. Um, and we have sort of projects like that going on all over the place. So in terms of specific ambassadors and shoe developments, um, Yes, Ollie, please. Um, oh, no, this is on. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, there, is, there are other ambassadors um, who are sort of coming on board. Uh, I mentioned earlier that John John is the sort of the, the pinnacle and the linchpin of our surfing strategy. Um, we are mindful that even though he represents a beautiful synergy between yin and yang, um, we do want to have females within that space, um, and there are a plentitude of incredible um, women surfers who we are. Some are we're in conversations with at the moment to see if we can uh, to add to, to the surf roster um, across other disciplines around. Sort of, I think we've got a pretty good balance within sort of strength training, um, but we're bringing on more functional fitness ambassadors, some superstars um, within that space. We can't talk about a lot of these because of um, there's. Uh, NDAs and, and conversations that are happening behind the scenes that aren't quite yet for public consumption, but 
Um, certainly watch this space. Over the next three months, you will see a few big names joining the ranks of Vivo and Living Barefoot um, and helping to amplify that message across all of our channels. Um, and certainly going into next year, there will be a lot more um, that are joining our teams across multiple disciplines um, and also within uh, regenerative voices as well. So to support our lifestyle proposition, um, working with more people who are uh, active and very vocal with great platforms within that space, as well as the familiar places of functional fitness um, and outdoor trail running, etc. So yeah, lots more to come. Can't really talk specifics, um, but yeah, absolutely watch this space. The next few months are going to bear some fruit, and uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. Thank you. Well, the, uh, save, save me there from uh, making any faux pas, because I was just about to make a couple of serious faux pas. So. <laughs> um, any other questions? Okay, so we have come to the end of the formal part of the proceedings. We are now, and I wish you all tuning in from all around the world to do the same. Gather a drink, gather some refreshments, there's some down in the foyer there, and then we're all going to go up into the woods, which is basically right up there, and Ben and Gordon are going to get us moving and shaking in the avenue of trees um, in this beautiful location, and then we're going to go all the way down to the bottom, to the teepee, where the festivities will begin. There'll be an award ceremony and a an amazing feast and we'll be recreating whoever does the best job of recreating the census marketing campaign on the dance floor gets a free pair of census 